coming a bit late to you guys, but uh, just had a little bit of trouble today with my computer, uh, rather the virtual computer as I'm running this um, on a Mac. Um, so we are in, in Windows, but we are running it as a virtual machine. Okay, uh, what I want you to uh, have a look at is flow code 8, because for those of you who are able to download it at home, um, we won't have flow code 7 and uh, all the, I started you on flow code 7 because it's a little bit gentler in uh, terms of getting used to things. Uh, it is pretty much the same, uh, but uh, let's get cracking with flow code 8 and um, let's have a look at what that looks like. So in school, uh, in college, you will have uh, flow code 8 in this menu here somewhere. Uh, that is what the icon looks like. Um, so we'll get that started. As I said, my machine is running terribly slow today um, because it's uh, in the process of getting updated as well. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just Windows. Anyway, so we should be getting flow code 8 up here now in a uh, minute. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to ignore that. And hopefully we should have flow code. Hooray! So this is what the start screen or start page rather looks like in flow code 8. Um, uh, there'll be a, um, a, a panel loading here with um, loads of information and questions etc. Uh, generally speaking I will say once you get used to flow code just just close the start page it's, um, it's some useful information in the beginning when you get started with it um, and it's really slow loading here on my machine so we're not gonna we're not gonna deal with that we're just gonna go straight into a new project embedded so a new project embedded and the uh, project board that we're going to be using is uh, an arduino and i'll show you that um, uh, in the next lesson uh, when we come in and what it looks like so we have uh, loads of different uh, chips to to choose from here loads of different systems uh, pick chips, Raspberry Pi, etc., etc. So, but we are going to go with the Arduino, and we're going to go down to the um, PDIP. Um, you know, SMD uh, is surface-mounted um, components. Uh, RDIP is the regular ones. We'll, we'll stick to the regular one for now. It doesn't make a huge difference. So Arduino and Arduino Uno R3 PDIP. I'm not going to repeat myself too many times over this because with, with a video like this you can pause it anytime you like and, um, and go back and rewind in your own um, time. So, um, it looks fairly similar to uh, Flow Code 7. The color scheme is different. And at the later stage, I'll show you how to, to change the color scheme yourself so you can uh, do it to your liking. Um, I mean, not that hugely important, but um, uh, it is very similar in terms of the building blocks, uh, if not identical. So the building blocks uh, for our code is here on the side. Inputs, outputs, um, delays, decisions, loops, etc. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to build up the knowledge for you bit by bit. And we always have a beginning and an end here. Um, and we have all the uh, displays, outputs and inputs here. Uh, but what we're going to stick to for the time being is the uh, combo board which in flow code 7 is listed under displays. So when you click on display, the combo board would normally come or show up here. Uh, in flow code 8, they have moved it uh, to uh, hardware. 
because technically it's not just a display it's it's actually a combination board uh, with uh, inputs outputs and displays on it so we're gonna scroll all the way up to the uh, beginning ah! here where we have the combo so e blocks one okay combo board just double click on that Uh, yeah double click not single click like what i did and hopefully that should lo load in the 2d dashboard panel if for some reason you should see uh, which it doesn't show here now the 3d dashboard panel as well just normally we can just get rid of that uh, it's not that important for us now uh not at this time uh at the you know beginning of uh of our learning so to speak so um the difference the immediate difference that you probably will spot here straight away is that the upper row of uh buttons and leds have changed from a zero a1, A2, A3, etc. And the lower has changed to D. That is not hugely important. It's just a, a different way of labeling them. So instead of A and B, we have C and D. Um, the only time you need to remember that is when you um, start uh, using the inputs and the outputs. So let's get started with a program. Um, so we'll start with a um, let's start with an output so we just drag an output there okay now it says port a here and that's no good because we have only got uh, ports c and d so we obviously gonna need to change that um, so the first thing we can do then is just double click on this or right click well double click or right click and as usual let's uh, let's go for c0 so we need to go to the port change it to c um, variable well if we want to turn it on it needs to be on remember in a digital we have ones and zeros so that means that one is on and zero is off and let's for argument's sake uh, use single bit as well which means that we can control these individually so we'll, we'll start with single bit and zero which means that we have c zero there click ok now in essence this is not going to do much because we've only got an output we've got nothing to control it with we can try it so we go up to the run simulation f5 let's see what happens nothing happens wow well, we got a light on but then the simulation just stops straight away because we've got no loop here all it does is turn the light on so okay we can see the light has gone on but there is nothing else happening we, we have no means of controlling it turning it off or anything like that so we're just gonna have to stop the simulation we've done that yeah and uh, maybe we should put um, a timer in for it uh, like a delay so let's uh, drag a delay in there uh, one millisecond way too quick uh, you know, give me a, a sort of be, be able to get the board to react to that quickly so on this time I'm gonna right click on it and go to properties so there's two ways right click properties or double click uh let's change that to let's say 200 milliseconds 200 milliseconds okay so we now got two blocks in our program uh let's test it just to see what happens so again all we all we can see is the light going on that's it there, there is nothing else happening because there's no other control all we have said is turn light on for 200 milliseconds uh, we haven't told it to go off we haven't told it to you know blink or anything like that so there, there isn't much going on um, in, in that way 
Um, let's uh, let's make it a little bit more advanced. So um, let's try to uh, select these, and we can copy and paste. So rather than keep dragging these modules in, we can copy and paste the ones that we want to reuse. So I'm just gonna copy, so I can go to edit and copy that way, or use the keyboard shortcut, and then I just click down here and edit and paste. And then I've got the same thing again here. All I need to do now is double click on that or right click and properties. And let's uh, go from uh, one to zero. So we're going to turn this off this time. So in theory now, when we run the program, now this is stuck on because we've told it to go on and we've not told it to do anything else but let's just test it let's test the program so f5 or the play button here is the testing of the program let's see what happens okay so the lights stayed on for a bit and then went off for a bit let's try that again yeah light comes on for a little bit and then uh, 200 milliseconds about uh, point two, uh, uh, zero point two seconds. Uh, so, so it's not, it's not very quick. And the board here doesn't react that quickly, so it doesn't actually show the time. Uh, so, um, uh, let's uh, let's do something a little bit more exciting here. So, last time when you were with me in class, you also added a loop. So, let's drag a loop in here. Okay, now that loop needs to be so that we have a program inside. So I'm going to select all these, drag them in to that loop. So in theory now, we have got a loop, so it runs forever and ever and ever. Uh, that means we can, uh, when we play that program, you can see now all we have got is a blinking LED uh, with a 200 millisecond interval. So on off, on off, on off with 200 milliseconds in between each single blink. Um, it's a program. We, we can we can actually call it a program because actually it does something. But Still, we have no means of controlling it, so it's not a really proper program. Let's um, let's bring some control into this, shall we? So, uh, how about putting an input in? So, um, we'll grab our input there. We can put that in here. Okay. Uh, now, if we're going to start using inputs, um, we uh, we also have to have choices. So um, that means that we have we have got to uh, set a um, a definition that if uh, something is detected on input one, as in that could be pressing a button or something like that. Uh, there has to be a choice. So button, if the button is pressed, then the program runs. But if the button isn't pressed, then the program needs to stay off. So uh, what we do here is uh, we go to the switch, not the switch, sorry, the uh, decision um, button here. I'm just going to drag that one in there. Uh, this is now uh, totally uh in a, in the wrong place this this program does not make sense whatsoever anymore and if we try to play it uh we we'll get an error message would you like to view the first offending command offending command I imagine that okay uh, so down here we have something called syntax error uh, let's expand that no it doesn't even want to show us oh maybe it does uh, my computer is sound is very slow here now. Let's have a look. Show. Okay, so somewhere here there is a there is a problem, and we, you know I know that because this this program I said it just does not make sense whatsoever, uh, and I'll explain why. 
Okay, uh, we have here got a decision or a listening command, uh, but what's it listening out for? It's not listening out for anything. Okay, let's move that input all the way up here. Um, now it kind of makes a little bit more sense because it's listening out for that button there or that command, whatever input that would be. But uh, the loop here or the decision has not got anything um, uh, sort of, you know, uh, in terms of the output, it, it, it will not um, give us a, a um, an action of anything. This, um, this loop here is, is empty. Um, so what I'm going to do is go, then going to move all these little bits here, these uh, um, switching on and switching off commands into the loop. And now all of a sudden we are starting to make a little bit more sense because uh, what we can do now is we have an input here. So let's first of all decide which button we should use. So um, as we can see here, we have got C5 on the top and D567, uh, etc. on the bottom. So that's the D row and that's the C row. Let's, uh, let's use the D row to control the C lights. How about that? So let's go to uh, properties. And let's put a variable. Um, now the variables here. So first of all, let's put that to switch on. Switch and underscore on. So we are now going to make a variable. Uh, variables are commands that will let us control the program a little bit uh, better. Um, port B, no. We are going to have port D. Let's uh, choose a single bit. Let's uh, have button number. How about button number three? So let's do that. Button number three. Uh, and the end of variable here now because um, we we can't just say. Um, oh, um, zero or on. We we need something a little bit more sophisticated. That's where variables come in. So we're going to add a variable now. So na uh, name of a uh, new variable, uh, LED on, LED on, LED on, initial value one, and we're going to have a Boolean value, okay? That is very simply true or false. We're, we're going digital here now. We're not, we're not going to have uh, values between 0 and 255. We're just going to have very simply 1 or 0, true or false. So Boolean value, value, and I'm going to look out for a 1 value here. We're going to put in a description. Uh, if we want, that's optional. Pressing a button. Okay. So we know what it's like. And then we've got to double click it. So it makes, uh, go in there, get, get rid of that zero. Uh, let's check it now, switch on. Yes, port D. Yes, we want LED on, that's the variable. And we can see that variable here now on the side, yeah. Ignore these constants, uh, variables. That's what we're gonna concentrate on. Uh, single bit three, we're going a little bit more advanced now, guys. So, but, but you know, bear, Bear with me and, and, and try to hang on. Click OK. Uh, so we can now see switch on here and D3 LED on. Yes. Then we need to make sure that this command is picked up in our decision. So let's right click on our decision and see what options we have got there. Uh, decision. Uh, we'll leave it with the decision. And, uh, what are we looking out for? We're looking for LED on. Okay, so let's just and make get sure of that L LED. If LED on, then yes, we go down to output here and uh, let's click OK. So this is how this works now. 
So this loop obviously will run this program forever and ever and ever. Uh, we have a switch up here. So we are controlling the switch D3, that's down here. Uh, when that goes on, uh, this decision box will uh, look out for the switch. Is the switch on? Okay, let's lead the program down here. And for as long as the switch is on, in theory, we should then have um, lights going off and on. And, and then when we let go of the switch, that um, should then the, um, the loop of the blinking light should then be stopping. Okay. Why don't we test it and see what happens? So let's play the or run the command or run the program rather. Sorry, let's have a look. Okay, have we got any lights on here? No, we have not. Okay, what do we need to do? We need to try to push the D3. So let's push the D3 button there and keep that pressed in. And you can see on C0 the light is now blinking so for as long as we hold that button in I'm pressing on the button now let go and it stops press blink light so it could be a bit like uh, simulating um, an indicator in a car right so we have D3 could be the right hand light and then we could add another program D4 here and have another light for the left hand indicator and so on so we can simulate systems very easily with this combo board and that is uh, your first proper program so what you are going to save this as and i appreciate some of you might not have managed to download it um, to your computer yet but Please have a look at this video anyway, so that you're prepared for tomorrow um, when you come in and hopefully um, you should be able to make this program uh, in the classroom. Um, as I said, it, it's uh, you know, now adding a little bit more control to our program here. So we'll go and file, save as, now I'm not going to save this. Uh, oh. save as now I've already saved this as you might imagine because I've been testing my program as well and uh, I've got a unit 6 folder here which you should have obviously with uh, my name in it etc etc and what you're gonna save it as is push to blink okay push to blink that's what you're gonna save it as I've got loads of uh, funky programs here for you so we're gonna go through those um, uh, in the lessons and hopefully we'll get a good grip on um, uh, flow code which is uh, as I said is an exam unit so push to blink is what we're gonna save it on press save as I said I have already done it so I'm gonna replace my original one I'm just gonna press cancel for the time being and um, yeah uh, hopefully uh, you should kind of get a grip on how these blocks work now in terms of programming this uh, combo board and we're gonna go uh, delve into this quite a lot more advanced with uh, setting up digital displays uh, LCD and LEDs the L LCD display here where we can do text and LEDs here where we can do uh, numbers okay so thank you for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.